Welcome to the Rutgers Eco Complex. It is important to understand the dynamic relationship between food, energy, and water systems. This video will focus on the efficient utilization of one of the technologies that addresses this balance, hydroponics. Hydroponics may be defined as the science of growing plants without soil, a nutrient solution that contains all the essential elements needed for optimum growth and development is delivered directly to the plant. Hydroponic crop production is used widely throughout the U.S. and the entire world. It has some advantages over other indoor crop production systems. There are typically lower upfront costs and setup times, greater water use efficiency, and a higher level of control over the crop nutrient program. There are many ways to set up a hydroponic system, but they can be categorized in a general way into two groups, depending on how the plants are supported. Solid media-based systems use a variety of inert materials to give the plants means to support themselves. Water-only based systems use mechanical means to support the plant. Some of the more common types of systems that use mechanical support include nutrient film technique, or NFT, ebb and flood benches and trays, and raft or floating systems. Energy efficiency is a key parameter when selecting and designing a hydroponic system that will meet your needs. However, you could build the most energy efficient hydroponic system on the planet, but if it doesn't provide a healthy plant environment and good growth, it won't succeed. So, a good hydroponic system is one that takes a holistic approach and optimizes crop production with water conservation and energy efficiency. This video will explain some of the components of a hydroponic system designed for energy efficiency. We'll cover pumping, aeration, filtering, and space utilization. Lighting and temperature control will be covered in another video. Because hydroponic systems are water-based, some amount of water movement or delivery to the plant roots is required. It is important to minimize the number of pumping stations you need for the system to operate properly. Ideally, pumping the water once and allowing gravity to move it through the system leads to a higher efficiency and an added bonus of minimizing failure points in the system. Hydroponic water holding tanks should be the lowest point in the system and pumped from there to the plants. In a recirculating system, the return water should be allowed to flow by gravity back to the holding tank. Keep the operating pressure as low as possible without sacrificing watering uniformity by using large supply mains and submains. Also keep the orifice size from the submain to the crop as large as possible to minimize pressure loss. Another benefit of this type of design is that the amount of clogging will be reduced, which will promote crop yields and reduce maintenance cost. With NFT systems, consider putting the pump on a cycle timer so that it will turn on and off several times per hour, thereby reducing the pumping time by as much as 50%. With a raft or floating systems, the water stays in the shallow pond, but it should be recirculating within the pond at a slow rate under low pressure. Plant roots need oxygen to respire and grow strong. Almost every hydroponic design has to aerate the water or allow the roots to be exposed to air for short periods of time. If using a solid media-based system, good root aeration is achieved by watering intermittently, with adjustments being made for the size of the crop, relative humidity, temperature, and light level. Allowing the media to dry down slightly so air can fill the pore spaces is important for good aeration. Managing the irrigation cycles properly so that only 5 to 10 percent of the water being applied eventually leaches through the block or pot will also save energy, water, and nutrients. With water-based hydroponic systems, this is accomplished by allowing it to spill over a filter, spillway, or flowing quickly past the roots, as with NFT. With raft systems, supplying air via air stones in the water is important to maintain oxygen levels. Designing the aeration system to take advantage of stirring that will occur when flowing back to the holding tank is a good way to minimize energy use for aeration. 
Hydroponic solutions, especially in recirculating systems, need filtration to remove solid particles suspended in the water. For a non-recirculating system, the amount of filtration needed is dependent on how clean the water supply is. Large size filters require less energy and reduce the water pressure less than smaller size filters that process the same amount of water. Also, disc filters and sand filters require less frequent cleanings than screen filters. For recirculating systems, the amount of suspended solids can be significant and can contribute to the spread of root pathogens, so good filtration is important. Low energy filtration techniques include spillway screens, settling basins, and sand filters. Maximizing the use of available growing space conserves energy because the yields are higher per square foot without increasing the energy input. This is especially important for locations where heating and cooling requirements are high. There are several hydroponic systems where a high ratio of growing space to floor space can be achieved. Ebb and flow benches and raft systems can occupy over 95% of the floor space because the crop can easily be moved out of a production row and into a section of the greenhouse where the planting and harvesting can occur. Spacing the crop out as it grows can also maximize space utilization. So I hope this instructional video provided you with information you will find useful for your hydroponic system selection and design. Growing food in ways that use less energy, water, and fertilizer per unit of food produced is a way to help everyone with sustainability. And since there is a cost to all these things as well, it can only help your bottom line to consider ways to use less and grow more. We did not have any experience at all. I could barely grow anything in the dirt. <laughs> but we were always interested in it and liked the concept of how clean everything was. So we got interested in hydroponic growing um, back in 1984. We actually went, when we first got married, we went down to Epcot Center and we saw them growing lettuce and spinning it around. They said they were going to uh, grow lettuce and stuff in space. We just thought that was amazing. Well, Breadwood Farms, we do a little bit of everything. Our main product right now is the hydroponic greenhouse. We do raise beef cattle and we have some hogs we raise. I have some chicks I'm raising up and in the spring we do maple syrup and in the fall we have hops. The property is 130 acres. It was formerly a Girl Scout camp and uh, we've been here since 1999. I grow rosemary because I like rosemary. <laughs> More dandelion greens. And down here I have some tatsoi, which is another Asian green that's really nutritious for you that gives a nice bitter flavor to, um, to your salads. We found Crop King online, of course, because they're so close to us, and um, contacted them and signed up for the grower school. That was the first thing we did. The experience in the grower school was very positive, and it was, you know, looked like it's something that we would be able to handle and do. And it you know, would take some work, but already having a small business, we figured we'd be able to have it take off. It's been wonderful. They've been very helpful with me, and whenever I call and ask questions, they help me out. You know, this is something, change of life, and let's just go for it and start up the business. And then these little ones over here are gonna be mini bok choys. They take about six weeks to grow, and they're a nice little, I harvest them like three or four, as you can see in the cubes, there's three or four of them. And when you harvest them and you cut them in half, they're really good on the grill, you grill them. Then we decided to, you know, after going to grower school, we started looking at different greenhouse packages from some other companies around the world. And, you know, we were working with some big ones in the Midwest. And their expertise wasn't there. They'd send me a list of what needed to be in the package, and it didn't make any sense. And we worked with Crop King, and, you know, their whole package made sense. And they had a nice book or the manual to put everything together. And it was just a, a good fit. Katie and I built the whole greenhouse ourselves. I found that the manual and all the pieces were there, everything was you know, packaged out, and it was, it was relatively easy to put the whole greenhouse together. I mean, it's just definitely something that, I think most people could build this greenhouse, and I think that's probably the most important thing that we looked at too, was we really didn't want to hire a bunch of contractors to come in. Um, I had some of the equipment that we needed to do it, but we just thought that with the package that Crop King had put together, it was something that we could do on our own, which made a lot of sense for us and helped keep costs down. 
And then here's another big seller, watercress. It's supposed to be one of the most nutritious foods in the world. It loves growing here in the hydroponics, even the flowers are edible. And um, it has a really nice peppery flavor. And a lot of people like to put it in their salads or put it on burgers. And I like to make a potato-based soup out of it. The main people that we sell to, um, we have two avenues that we go right now. It's changed over the years, but right now we're selling to a CSA program that services mostly the Columbus area, and they take a thousand heads a week, and they like, when we grow specialty items for them because they like to have the variety in their packages. And then we also do a farmer's market once a week, which is a great opportunity to get feedback on the products that we have because we have a lot of customers that are repeat customers, and when I trial stuff, they try it out and they let me know how good or bad or whatever they think about it. Everything is picked the day before the market, and we do have a wide variety besides the lettuce. We have the Asian greens, arugula, cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, and so people like to come to us so they know it's all fresh and they can get everything in one spot. All of our produce is super clean. We don't have any sprays, herbicides, pesticides. Yeah, with how we choose, I go through the seed catalogs, look at something that might be a good fit, and I trial it, and then I take it out to our farm market, and I also send samples to my CSA people and see if they like it, then I'll, I'll try to grow it for them. And nine times out of ten, I've been successful with the different things I've been growing. Well, the main thing that motivates me is when people come back week after week and say how good the produce is. That's my main motivation. I think so too. I mean, we've made friends from our uh, farm market. We've had people come down to the farm. Um, we've gone on trips with people. Uh, we've made some really great friends from our farm market. and. Um, it's just, it's a really good experience to have somebody come back and just tell you how great it is. And Being a hydroponic grower, I know it's a fresh quality, clean product I'm delivering to people. There's no worries. I think the most rewarding part of our job is being able to work together and be here at the farm.